Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with some more math today. We're going to continue on with our week of limits going to infinity. Um, I'm going to be going over these two limits specifically today. I'm going to start with the limit as x goes to infinity of sine x, and then we're going to kind of use that in our discussion of figuring out the limit as x goes to infinity of sine x over x. So let's just start with sine x first. What you want to think about when you're solving a limit like this, and not just sine x, but also if we were taking the limit as x goes to infinity of cosine x or tangent x, uh, you know, same kind of idea would apply to all three of those limits. What you want to do is think about what the graph of this function looks like. So let's just quickly kind of draw a little sketch. If you think about graphing this on an xy axis, sine of x would look something like this, right? It just kind of goes back and forth between negative one and one, and it'll just keep this pattern going as we go to, as X goes to infinity, this is just gonna keep going back up and down, right? It's just gonna, you know, indefinitely oscillate between one and negative one. So as a result, this limit actually does not exist. And the same idea would, would apply for cosine x, the limit as x goes to infinity of cosine x, and also the limit as x goes to infinity of tangent x, because all, you know, sine and cosine both have the same kind of oscillating pattern where they just go back and forth between negative one and one as x goes to infinity. Tangent does the same kind of thing. Tangent looks a little bit different. It looks more like this, where it has these pieces that repeat over and over every, you know, this first one here is at pi over two, and then every pi units over, it's just going to repeat the same thing infinitely many times over in the x direction. So as x goes to infinity, our tan of x is just going to kind of go between negative infinity and infinity over and over and over. So same kind of idea, all of our trig functions, sine x, cosine x, tan x, all three of those, this limit as x goes to infinity of them will not exist because they don't approach one specific y value as x goes to infinity. So let's keep that in mind now when we evaluate this limit as x goes to infinity of sine x over x. This one's going to be a little different because the limit as x goes to infinity of sine x does not exist, it does not necessarily mean that this limit doesn't exist. It's possible that a limit like this could exist even though one piece of it individually, you know, if we took it out, it may not exist. But what we can do when we look at a limit like this, you know, you may take a glance at this and think, you know, maybe L'Hopital's rule could work here. Maybe we could apply that. Um, but remember, think about the three conditions that you need for L'Hopital's rule to work. One of those three conditions is that the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator, they both need to either go to zero or go to infinity. So that means that the limit of each, the numerator and the denominator on their own, both need to exist. Since sine, the limit as x goes to infinity of sine x does not exist, that tells us L'Hopital's rule is not gonna work here. So we can't do L'Hopital's rule. So what other tool might we be able to use? Well, what we're going to use is squeeze theorem. What squeeze theorem says is if we can find two other functions, we can make these functions whatever we might want to make them. But if we can find two other functions where this function here, sine of x over x, is trapped in between these two functions, then we can use the limit of these functions to find the limit of this function. So what we want to do is kind of think about what might, what two functions might we be able to use that as x gets infinitely big, they would kind of trap sine of x over x between them. So this is just going to go back to what our graph of sine of x look like. Remember, sine of x is always going to be between negative one and one. It's always going to be trapped between those two values, right? As our x gets infinitely big, sine of x is still going to be less than one and greater than negative one, always, for any value of x. So what that means is, if we know 
sine of x is always trapped between 1 and negative 1. If we take this inequality here, and if we divide both sides, or kind of all three sides, not really both sides, but if we divide all three pieces by the same thing, they should all maintain this inequality. One important thing to note, when you divide both sides of an inequality by some number, if that number is negative, you have to flip the inequality. But in this case specifically, we know that x is approaching positive infinity. So x is going to be a positive number. Therefore, if we divide all three of these things by x, our inequality sign is going to stay pointing in the direction that it is, and we don't have to flip it. So therefore, we know that sine of x over x is trapped in between negative 1 over x and positive 1 over x. We can use this along with squeeze theorem to find this limit. And the reason for that is, let's think about the limit of each of these things as x goes to infinity. So we'll start with this. If we have the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 over x, let's think about what that function does. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this piece here is going to go infinitely large, right? So we're going to end up with negative 1 divided by an infinitely big number. Well, as our denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to end up with a constant divided by a bigger and bigger number. And if you think about what that would do, as we have 1 over, you know, let's think about what happens with big numbers. 1 divided by 100 is going to be a lot bigger than 1 divided by 1,000, which is going to be bigger than 1 divided by 10,000. And if you imagine that denominator keep getting bigger and bigger, this whole thing, this entire value, is going to get closer and closer to 0. So this limit as a whole is going to go towards 0 as we divide by a bigger and bigger number here. Similarly, the same kind of thing is going to happen if we get rid of our negative sign and we just have the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. Again, this denominator is going to go to infinity, causing this whole thing to go towards 0. Because our numerator is a constant, it's not growing. As our denominator grows, the fraction as a whole is going to get closer and closer to 0. And you could test that out, you know, plug in bigger and bigger values for x on a calculator, and you'll see that you're you're going to end up with a smaller and smaller decimal the bigger denominator you plug in, as long as you keep your numerator as a constant 1. So both the positive and negative version, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x and the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 over x, those limits both go to 0. So therefore, if we know that sine of x over x is trapped between these two things, where as x goes to infinity, this thing here is going to get closer and closer to zero, and this thing here is going to get closer and closer to zero. If this is always going to be between these two things that are going to close in on zero, then we know that this must also go to zero. So that's all squeeze theorem says, is that if we have this function trapped between these two other functions, and we know that both of these functions are going to both go to the same thing, then this limit that's stuck between them must also go to that same thing. So that tells us that this is going to be 0.